Reiki 1, Lesson 1, Reiki, the Universal Life Force. There is a non-physical ubiquitous energy that gives life to every living organism. For many thousands of years we have known of this energy and have sought to develop ways to harness its power to heal and influence our lives. The Japanese call this energy Qi. It is also known as Qi by the Chinese, Prana by a number of Asian cultures, and the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost by most of the Western world. We carry this energy in and around our bodies from the moment we are conceived. Science has established its existence, and with the aid of Kirlian photography, we're able to see this energy that encompasses all living things. Ancient Eastern cultures have harnessed and applied this energy for healing since before the birth of Jesus Christ. Many successful disciplines such as Reiki, Tai Chi, Feng Shui, meditation, yoga and acupuncture have been developed to control and greatly enhance the flow of this energy in and around the body. The energy itself is pure and has omniscient wisdom. However, there are ten things that weaken the life-giving energy. One, too much alcohol. Two, a poor diet. Three, a lack of exercise. Four, drugs. Five, tobacco. Six, negative habits. Seven, stress. Eight, poor breathing. Nine, a lack of sleep and rest. And ten, negative psychic activity. Humanity has become fragmented and hollow. We're only a shadow of what we could be. We need to go back to go forward once more. By practicing the disciplines of Reiki, you regain your natural ability to heal yourself and others, and the knowledge you require to lead a happier, more fulfilling life. Nature's life-giving energy is a great and wise teacher. By pursuing its wisdom through Reiki, you will grow to new heights of understanding and life will flow at a more enjoyable and exciting pace. Remember always that this life-giving energy is a gift from God, your birthright. Everyone possesses this gift and uses it daily even though they probably do not realize they're doing so. When a child, for instance, falls and hurts their knee, instinctively they'll place their hand on the sore spot and the pain is relieved as they unconsciously work with the energy to heal themselves. Likewise, a parent will kiss the child's hurt or injured limb better and place their hand on top. Unknowingly, both the parent and the child are working unconsciously with this healing energy. The parent is sending and channeling the energy, the child is receiving and drawing the energy. This wonderful energy is free. There are no patents or copyrights attached. All you need is the desire and the discipline to attune yourself to the energy and its life-changing properties. This concludes Lesson 1. Please move on now to Lesson 2. Reiki 1, Lesson 2, What is Reiki? Reiki is a form of hands-on healing with its origins in India and the East, dating back many thousands of years to the time before Christ and Buddha. The original name, disciplines and techniques of Reiki were lost due to the traditional method of passing knowledge from generation to generation by word of mouth. Exactly when this ancient art of healing disappeared is difficult to determine. However, we do know that it was rediscovered by a Japanese scholar and monk named Dr. Mikei Yasui. It was in fact Dr. Yasui who fashioned the name Reiki. Reiki is a two-syllable Japanese word meaning universal life force. Although the proper Japanese pronunciation is Reiki, it has been westernized to Reiki. Rei means universal, omnipresent, present everywhere at the same time. Esoterically, Rei means spiritual consciousness, the omniscient wisdom from God or the higher self. Ki is the non-physical vitality that gives life to all living things. Many cultures understand and recognize the importance of Ki energy and how it impacts our lives and well-being. Ki energy can be activated for the purpose of healing. When you feel healthy and full of enthusiasm, the flow of key energy in your body is high and unencumbered. Life seems easier to deal with and you have a higher resistance to illness and disease. However, when your key energy is low because maybe you're under stress or feeling unhappy and tired, you'll be more susceptible to disease and sickness. Your attitude will be generally negative and you'll find it difficult to deal with life's challenges. Key is the very essence of the soul. It leaves the body when a person dies. Reiki is holistic. It works on the body, mind and spirit by stimulating a person's own natural healing abilities. The blocked emotional and physical elements that lead to illness and disease are cleared. Reiki is neither positive nor negative. 
It is, in fact, the highest and most profound vibration of life. Divine in origin, it allows us all to become one with all living things alive in our world. Reiki is pure, unconditional love and joy, bringing all who experience and embrace its principles together in harmony. The skills and techniques associated with Reiki are simple and easy to learn. Small children and adults can equally comprehend and incorporate this ancient form of healing into their lives. Regular contact with Reiki will bring the recipient's mind, body and spirit into balance. It will also help prevent future creation of illness and disease. This concludes Lesson 2. Please move on now to Lesson 3. Reiki 1, Lesson 3. How Reiki Works The human body is made up of over 50 trillion cells. Each cell contains omniscient wisdom and is connected to the universe and every living thing within it. A good analogy is to think of the universe as a huge ocean of water. Every living thing within that ocean is like a tiny droplet. Together these droplets make up and are part of Reiki, the universal life force. Reiki is part of our genetic structure, an inbuilt intelligence that energizes the mind, body and spirit. Reiki stimulates growth, health, life and healing. When it is freely allowed to flow around the body, it can keep us alive and healthy for over 120 years. Unfortunately, bad habits and poor choices result in the flow of Reiki being stifled. It is important to note that Reiki cannot be destroyed. Even when we die and the life force leaves our body, it continues to exist as part of the universe. Through neglect and ignorance, we abuse this vital component of life. When the mind, body and spirit are in harmony, the biological intelligence that governs the body's resources and allows it to heal itself and function correctly are intensified. Reiki is the key that unlocks the body's optimum capabilities. There are seven main energy centers in the body that control the flow of the universal life force. They are called chakras. Each chakra is responsible for supplying energy to specific parts of the body. When they are blocked or clogged, the body becomes sick and the flow of energy is diluted. A full Reiki treatment reopens the chakras and rebalances the flow of the universal life force around the body. A person will normally need four full treatments on four consecutive days to boost the flow of Reiki energy. This will stimulate the body's immune system and natural healing abilities. Normally, the body will begin by cleansing itself of toxins. As the poisons are removed, the body becomes rebalanced and the healing process can begin. Many cultures have developed techniques and disciplines that stimulate the flow of key energy around the body. However, Reiki is the easiest to learn and administer. The techniques are simple to master, the results are profound. The seven major chakra points. The crown chakra, shown as white or violet, is positioned on top of the head. It represents enlightenment, intuition and spiritual vision. Energy supplied to the penile glands, upper brain and right eye. The third eye chakra, shown as indigo, is positioned in the middle of the forehead, just above the eyebrows. It represents psychic perception, telepathy and ESP. Energy supplied to the spine, lower brain, left eye, pituitary gland, nose, ears and central nervous system. The throat chakra, shown as light blue, is positioned in the centre of the neck. It represents self-expression, emotions, communication and creativity. Energy supplied to the throat, thyroid gland, upper lungs, arms and digestive tract. The heart chakra, shown as rose and green, is positioned in the middle of the chest. It represents emotion, love, devotion, spiritual growth and compassion. Energy supplied to the heart, thymus gland, liver, lungs and circulation system. The solar plexus chakra, shown as yellow, is positioned just above the navel. It represents the center of the body. Food is assimilated, turned into energy, and distributed throughout the body. Energy supplied to the emotions, stomach, liver, digestion, gallbladder, and the pancreas. The sacral chakra, shown as orange, is positioned just below the navel. It represents sexual energy, perceptions, and first impressions of people. Energy supplied to the reproductive organs, legs and the glands. The root chakra, shown as red, is positioned at the genitals. It represents life, physical vitality, birth and creation. Energy supplied to the spine, kidneys, bladder, 
and the suprarenal glands. Reiki is ever present in our bodies. This means anyone can harness this profound inbuilt intelligent energy for healing. However, without being attuned to the universal life force, you'll only be using about 10 to 20 percent of its capacity for healing. Madame Takata explained it best when she described Reiki as being similar to radio waves. We cannot see them, but we know they're everywhere around us. When we turn on a radio and tune into the radio waves, we can pick up a signal. That signal is turned into a radio program. Similarly, the universal life force is everywhere, although we cannot see it unless we use Curlian photography. When we are tuned into the energy by a Reiki master, we're able to harness Reiki to heal ourselves and others. This gift of healing remains with us for the rest of our lives. We can only lose it if we use it for negative or destructive purposes. Reiki is pure, and it needs to be treated as such. Reiki is channeled through the hands. When you place your hands on your own body, or the body of another person for the purpose of healing, you connect with the universal life force. The wisdom of Reiki then goes to work to bring about healing, balance, and whatever is needed on a holistic level. The best way to understand how Reiki works is to experience it. This concludes Lesson 3. Please move on now to Lesson 4. Reiki 1 Lesson 4 The History of Reiki The Japanese, like many ancient cultures, use word of mouth to pass their history and practices down from generation to generation. Unfortunately, this led to a great deal of knowledge and wisdom being watered down and lost. Many people involved with Reiki believe that the techniques we use today for healing were first used in India by Buddha and later by Jesus. Others look back even further to the civilizations of Mu and Atlantis for the birth and development of Reiki. Of course, without written proof, we can only speculate how humanity learnt to harness and develop the universal life force. What we can be certain of and confirm is that it was rediscovered at the end of the 19th century by Dr. Mikei Yasui. Until comparatively recently, apart from the tomb of Dr. Mikei Yasui in Tokyo, there has been very little material evidence of his life and work. Most written accounts on the history of Reiki declare that Dr. Yasui was a Christian monk who lectured at Doshisha University in Kyoto. One day a student asked Dr. Yasui if he believed the teachings of the Bible to be true. Could Jesus walk on water and heal people by touch? Audaciously he questioned if Dr. Yasui himself could heal the sick like Jesus. Yasui had to admit that this was beyond his capabilities. Embarrassed at being asked such questions and unable to demonstrate an answer, the story goes on to say that Dr. Yasui immediately resigned his post and began a personal quest to discover how he could heal in the way that Jesus had. The legend becomes even more doubtful when it recounts how Dr. Yasui decided to begin his search for the secrets of healing like Jesus in America, namely the University of Chicago. Reiki master William Hand has been able to disprove the legend of Dr. Yasui's search for enlightenment in America. Chicago University has no record of Dr. Yasui ever attending as a student. Furthermore, there is no record of Dr. Yasui ever attending or lecturing at Doshisha University. This work by William Rand confirms what many people believe. The history of Dr. Yasui's life had been changed in colour to suit Western society. Logically, there were far too many holes in the legend. The life of Dr. Mikei Yasui. Mikei Yasui was born into a family that had been practising Zen Buddhism for 11 generations. As a youth, Yasui developed a fascination with all things Western. However, he never travelled outside Japan. After leaving school, he went on to study allopathic medicine with several Western allopathic physicians who had graduated from Yale and Harvard University. When a cholera epidemic spread through Tokyo, Yasui was struck down with the disease. During his hospitalisation, as he was close to death, he had a spiritual experience. This inspired Yasui to study the ancient teachings of his ancestors. He joined a Zen monastery and began reading the ancient Sanskrit and sutras. After many years of study, Yasui found reference to an ancient form of healing. Further study revealed methods, formulas and symbols that detailed exactly how to practice and master this art of hands-on healing. However, although he had the technical knowledge to practice healing, he lacked the wisdom to turn the teachings into reality. He needed the key to turn on and activate the power. Yasui decided to seek the final piece of the jigsaw through meditation. Taking leave from the monastery, Yasui set off for the holy mountain of Kuriyama. When he reached the top, he picked up 21 pebbles and placed them in front of himself. He sat down and began his meditation. Each day he threw away one pebble. 
For 21 days he prayed, meditated, sang and read the sutras. On the last day as he prayed, he asked God to show him the light. Suddenly a bright light appeared in the sky and came rapidly towards him, hitting him on his forehead at the third eye chakra. Yasui was knocked unconscious and whilst in his altered state, he saw a vision of the same symbols he had earlier found in the sutras. This vision was the confirmation Dr. Yasui needed. He now knew that he had found the keys to the ancient form of healing used by Buddha and Jesus. When Yusui regained full consciousness, he proceeded to return down the mountain. On his descent, he stubbed and cut his toe. He instinctively placed his hand on the toe and the bleeding and pain stopped. On arrival at a nearby village, he stopped to eat and rest. He was able, despite having fasted for 21 days, eat a healthy meal without any stomach pain. The girl who served Yusui the meal was in great pain suffering from a toothache. Yusui asked if he could place his hands on her swollen face. She agreed, and he was able to ease the swelling and the pain. Rested, Yusui returned to the monastery. On arrival, he found his friend, the abbot, in bed suffering from severe arthritis. Once again, Yusui was able to alleviate the pain and suffering. Yusui called this gift from God Reiki, the Japanese word for universal life force. These experiences became known as the Four Miracles. Having demonstrated his knowledge and new ability to heal, the abbot advised Yasui to take this special gift into the slums of Kyoto to heal the beggars. He was reminded that it is not enough to heal the body. It is of equal importance to heal the spirit and mind also. This lesson was brought home to him very abruptly seven years later. Having spent the time giving Reiki to beggars in the slums of Kyoto to get them working, he found them returning to him with the excuse that it was easier to beg. Yasui had forgotten a basic doctrine. Mortified, he retreated to meditate once again. This time he was enlightened with the five principles of Reiki. The rest of Yasui's life was spent healing, teaching and developing the Yasui Chiku Ryo method of healing. Yasui had 19 major students who were all either Western allopathic or traditional Japanese in their practice. He knew he would have to develop a method that could be understood and accepted by any religion or culture. Reiki was fashioned by Yasui to have no dogma or religious beliefs attached to it. This made Reiki universal. Tenu, the Emperor of Japan, honoured Yasui's work by awarding him a doctorate. By the time of his death in 1930, Dr. Mikkei Yasui had initiated all 19 of his students to the level of Reiki master teacher. Dr. Chujiro Hayashi was chosen as the next Grand Master. It is important to note that Dr. Yasui taught all three degrees together. Dr. Yasui was cremated and his ashes placed in a Zen monastery in Tokyo. Upon the death of Dr. Yasui, Hayashi took over the role of Grand Master. He was responsible for training a further 16 Reiki Masters and creating a set formula for training. Hayashi was born into an upper-class Japanese family and was a qualified physician and retired Marine Commander. He set up a clinic near the Emperor's Palace in Tokyo called Shinonomacha. Each day his students held healing sessions at the clinic or visited people in their homes if they were unable to travel. Hayashi went on to write many reports on the system he had developed to treat various ailments. Special diets were incorporated into his treatments to assist the healing process. Probably his greatest advancement for Reiki was to discover the importance of whole body treatment and how the universal life force would go wherever it is needed to heal. Providing of course you applied the full body treatment. This was needed to remove any emotional or physical blocks. Hoeyo Kawamura was born on the island of Hawaii on the 24th of December 1900. At the age of 17, she married Saichi Takata. They had a happy marriage with two daughters. Tragically, her husband died at the young age of 32. After 13 years of marriage, Hoeyo Takata was left to raise two small children on their own. The stress and pressure of the situation took toll on her health. Within five years of her husband's death, she was diagnosed to be suffering from nervous exhaustion. Her health deteriorated to the point where she required surgery for a diseased gallbladder. However, she was also suffering from respiratory problems that meant the use of an anaesthetic during surgery could kill her. This was an extremely depressing and trying time in her life. Unfortunately, there was more pain and suffering to come after her sister died. After her parents had returned to live in Tokyo, it was Madame Takata's traditional responsibility to bring the news to them in person. After her arrival in Japan, she sought help at a hospital in Akasaka. It was discovered that she now had a tumour and appendicitis to add to her diseased gallbladder and respiratory problems. 
Her weight dropped dramatically and her doctor advised her to have immediate surgery. That night as she lay in bed she heard a voice saying the surgery is not necessary. The next day as she was being prepared for surgery she heard the voice again saying the surgery was not necessary. Ask, ask. Takata asked the surgeon if there was another way she could be healed and he told her of the Reiki clinic run by Dr. Hayashi. The surgeon had a sister who had been there herself and had recovered fully from an illness. Madame Takata went to the clinic and received treatments regularly for four months and was completely healed. She decided that she also wanted to learn Reiki and set up her own practice in Hawaii. Against all tradition, she was eventually able to persuade Dr. Hayashi to allow her to work and train at the clinic for 12 months. At the end of this time, it was felt that she'd earned the privilege of receiving the second degree in Reiki, the advanced practitioner's level. In the summer of 1937, Madame Takata returned to Hawaii and set up her own Reiki clinic. She spent her time healing and teaching Reiki. Dr. Hayashi visited Madame Takata in February 1938 and invited her to become a Reiki master. He said that she had gone through tests and had lived up to the Reiki ideals and principles. She was the first woman and the first foreigner to be given this honour. Hayashi returned to Japan. At the beginning of 1940, Japan was close to war with America. Dr. Hayashi was aware he would be called up to fight. As a man of healing and peace, he decided the only honourable thing to do was to precipitate his transition. He put his affairs in order. Madame Takata woke up one morning and saw a vision of Dr. Hayashi at the foot of her bed. She realised she must travel immediately to Japan. On arrival in Japan, she met with Dr. Hayashi as he explained his decision to leave this world. They spent many days planning the future. When Hayashi was satisfied he had safeguarded the future of Reiki, he called all his students and friends together. At this point he declared Madame Takata his successor and the third Grand Master of Reiki. Dressed in traditional Japanese attire, he lay down and allowed his spirit to leave his body. Madame Takata, installed as the next Grand Master, returned to Hawaii to continue her teaching and healing. This is when the history of Reiki was changed to portray Dr. Mikei Yasui as a Christian. Madame Takata realised that the American people and the Western world in general would hold certain bigotry towards the Japanese. So soon after the war, it would be impossible to promote a method of healing with its roots firmly in Buddhism in Japan. Madame Takata went on to train a further 22 Reiki masters before her death in December 1980. There were two Grand Masters installed to continue Takata's work. Phyllis Lee Furumoto, the granddaughter of Madame Takata, and Dr. Barbara Weber. This partnership was to run for only a year until, for personal reasons, they split up to continue the work separately. The Reiki Alliance was formed by Phyllis Lee Furumoto, while Dr. Weber set up the AIRA, the American International Reiki Association. Unfortunately, like many special things in this world, the human ego has taken hold. There are now several different associations throughout the world, all fighting amongst each other each claiming to have the only correct way of teaching Reiki. There is even a system of Reiki now being taught in 11 degrees. The latest rumours of an application to copyright Reiki seem to show how far this wonderful gift from God can be tainted. There was only one Reiki. No one has the right to claim it as their own. It belongs to humanity and to the universe. Our only wish for the future of Reiki is that instead of fighting and bickering, everyone involved with Reiki can begin to come together in the true spirit of healing. Let's share our experiences and skills so Reiki can be accepted universally as a natural treatment for the mind, body and spirit. We need to work together to promote this cause. It is vital in our own increasingly harsh and violent world that we change the whole psyche of humanity. Together we can bring this gift of healing to the world. We need Reiki practice and use in every hospital and clinic in the world. Let's spread the word positively. Let's make a difference. Let's make Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi and Madame Takata proud. Let's honour their work and their memory. Let's live and internalise the Reiki principles. This completes Lesson 4. Please move on now to Lesson 5. Reiki 1, Lesson 5. The Five Reiki Principles. Just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will not be angry. Just for today, I will do my work honestly. Just for today, I will give thanks for my many blessings. Just for today, I will be kind to my neighbour and every living thing. The Reiki principles are spiritual ideals. By adopting these precepts, you will add balance and substance to your life. 
It is important that you realise that you're not expected to live every moment of your life within the framework of these ideals. As humans, we're all imperfect. And that is why each principle begins with just for today. You can, without pressure or stress, work on improving yourself daily. If you slip up today, you can always begin again tomorrow. The more you work with the principles, the more you will condition yourself to adopt them as a way of life. To become more familiar with the Reiki principles, it is advisable to read them aloud at least twice a day. You may wish to place a large copy of the ideals in a picture frame. Then you can position that copy in a prominent place where you are sure to see it each day. Or if you're going to practice Reiki professionally, place it in your healing room. The five Reiki principles means different things to each one of us. Meditation will help to unlock your own perceptions. Simply sit or lie down in a comfortable position and close your eyes. Repeat one of the ideals several times aloud, using it as a mantra. As you drift into a meditative state, become aware of what's happening inside your mind and body. You may experience many different feelings, emotions and thoughts. If you do this exercise in a group, share your experiences and write down everything that happened during the meditation. It is interesting to look at your notes on this exercise on a regular basis to see how you've grown by adopting these precepts. Repeat the exercise of meditating on each principle annually and compare notes or if in a group setting discuss the differences that have taken place. Just for today I will not worry. Worry causes stress and anxiety leading to an imbalance of the mind, body and spirit and blockages to the root chakra. The best way to overcome worry is to accept that all of us are faced with difficulties and setbacks in our lives. How we respond to them determines how we ultimately lead our lives. If you choose to respond negatively by getting upset and anxious towards one of life's setbacks, you have chosen to damage the balance of your mind, body and spirit. If you respond positively by accepting the setback as an opportunity to learn, you can live a happier and more fulfilling life. Allow yourself time each day to really laugh and have fun. Watch a funny movie or television show, read a humorous book or magazine. Whatever it takes to make you laugh, do it. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, man surrounds himself with images of himself. This wonderful pearl of wisdom teaches us that if you want to be happy, mix with happy people. Likewise, if you want to be negative and constantly worrying, you simply need to associate with people who are negative and worrisome. Laughter is a wonderful healer. It has been proven through numerous studies that laughter can heal and in some cases prevent life-threatening illnesses. Use this knowledge to live a happier and healthier and longer life. Take responsibility for how you deal with life setbacks. Have fun. Life's far too short to waste it worrying. Use Reiki to rebalance your mind, body and spirit and boost your resolve. Place one hand on the root chakra and the other hand on the heart chakra. Reiki will bring your mind, body and spirit into equilibrium. Keep your hands over these chakra points for as long as you intuitively feel you need to. This Reiki technique will remove the blockages caused by stress, worry and anxiety. It can be used for self-healing or on another person. Just for today, I will not be angry. Anger is an emotion. When we get angry, we lose control of that emotion. In order to live by the above principle, we must understand what triggers our anger and how we can choose to remove this destructive emotion from our being. In every confrontation that leads to anger, the person or the thing pushing your anger button has complete power and control over you. This simple realisation allows you to take back control of your emotions and as such you can now choose to respond to a situation in a positive way rather than react to a situation in a negative way. Every time you meet someone there is an exchange of energy. If you are both happy and find the meeting was enjoyable, then the energy exchange is neutral. However, if you lose control of your emotions and become angry, the other person has stolen your energy. Likewise, if someone gets angry at you, then you are stealing their energy. With this simple philosophy, you can counter the endless situations or people that in the past have triggered your anger and caused you to react in an unhealthy manner. Next time someone honks their horn at you or criticises you for no apparent reason, smile and say to yourself, I'm not going to let them steal my energy. Just imagine how much better you'll feel when you choose not to react to negative people or situations. How many times in the past have you shouted abuse at another car driver and still felt the anger in your stomach an hour or so later? That person stole your energy. They probably drove on laughing at how silly you looked when you lost your composure. You allowed them to cause you stress, anger and probably indigestion. Only one person came out of that confrontation with their energy intact and it wasn't you. 
Anger is a choice response. Decide each day not to allow your energy to be stolen from you by negative people or situations. On a physical level, anger can cause stomach and digestive disorders. Choose to live a healthier life free from anger. Use Reiki to assist the rebalancing process. Place one hand on your third eye chakra and the other hand on your root chakra. Keep your hands there for as long as you intuitively feel is necessary. This Reiki technique will help you to control and eliminate the destructive emotion. It can be used for self-healing or on another person. Just for today, I will do my work honestly. Honesty means different things to different people. Many people feel it's fine to take home a few pens from the office. The company turn over millions in profit each year so they can afford to lose a few items of stationery. While another person will judge the same incident as an act of theft and believe that anyone found stealing stationery should be dismissed and charged with theft and even prosecuted. Everyone at some point is dishonest. You may not steal from another person or company, but instead you'll be stealing from yourself. For example, if you have a talent to help people and you choose not to, then you're stealing from yourself by denying your gift. You're also stealing from the person who could have benefited from your talents. Wasting your time on meaningless pursuits such as watching television for hours each day is stealing from your sacred and special time on earth. Try to live your life to the best of your ability as honestly as you can. Honesty lives inside of you and doesn't care about being placed where others can view it. Finally, in the pursuit of a happier life, I urge you to encapsulate the words from Michael Landon, the father in the television series Little House on the Prairie. In his last interview before he died prematurely of cancer, he urged us to live every second. Place one hand on the third eye chakra and the other hand on the solar plexus chakra to use Reiki to assist in the rebalancing of this principle. Keep your hands there for as long as you intuitively think they need to remain on these chakra points. This additional hand position can be used for healing yourself or others. Remember, honesty is the best policy. Just for today, I will give thanks for my many blessings. Life tends to give us what we need. It may not be what we want, but it will be what we need. Karmically, throughout our lives, we receive what we need to grow and learn in this lifetime. If we grasp these lessons and grow accordingly, we will become spiritually enlightened. Instead of wasting your life complaining of things that have happened to you and the problems you face, step back for a moment on a regular basis and discover and appreciate the many blessings in your life. Make a list of all your blessings. You will be amazed at how many wonderful things that there are to give thanks for. Leave the materialistic things aside. They are shallow and meaningless. Pay attention to and focus on the things that are free and bring joy and humility to your life. For example, your mind, body, spirit, health, family, friends, flowers, trees, sea, sun, love, faith, knowledge, the countryside, animals, birds, the list is endless. When you appreciate the true wonders of life and let go of the materialistic things, you are bound to enjoy your life more. Place one hand on your third eye chakra and the other hand on the occipital ridge. Use Reiki to rebalance this principle in your life or in the life of another person. Just for today, I will be kind to my neighbour and every living thing. The law of karma states that what goes around comes around. Send out love and you receive love back in return. Send out kindness and you receive kindness. Send out healing and you receive healing. Send out positive thoughts and you'll receive positive results. Karma is a two-edged sword. Send out negative thoughts and you'll get negative results. Living within this preset will give you a happier and less stressful life full of joy, peace and love. To bring balance to this principle for yourself or others, first place one hand on the third eye chakra and the other hand on the root chakra. When you feel you're ready, Move your hand from the third eye chakra to the throat chakra and move your hand from the root chakra to the heart chakra, keeping it there until you intuitively feel you have finished. It is important to remember that the Reiki principles are only guides for a happier, more fulfilling life. Use meditation to unlock the true meaning of these precepts and incorporate them into your life. They will truly transform your life. Please remember that they are not commandments, they are gifts of wisdom. This concludes Lesson 5. Please move on now to Lesson 6. Reiki 1 Lesson 6. Preparing for Reiki 1. The Path to Reiki. People from all walks of life are drawn to Reiki for many different reasons. Many people come to Reiki after personal recommendation from a friend who has already attended a workshop. They notice positive changes in their friend and decide to experience it for themselves. A large majority of people simply need healing and want to take responsibility and control of their own treatment and well-being. 
The most common factor seems to be that people are searching for hope and guidance. Often people feel empty and are looking for a way of filling that void. Many students begin as skeptics, just curious to find out more about it, and leave as Reiki enthusiasts. The secret to getting the most from Reiki is to be open to Reiki. Instead of being negative and skeptical, let the joy of Reiki envelop you. Leave your fears and doubts behind and jump headfirst into a life-changing experience. Reiki draws you to itself. If you're attending a seminar or workshop on first degree Reiki, you are there for a reason. You need it. Trust in the omniscient wisdom of Reiki. Remember, you will only need the first degree attunement once in your life. So make it a celebration you will never forget. It's up to you. The Initiation Ceremony In order to work with and become a channel for Reiki, you need to go through the first degree initiation ceremony, which consists of four attunements. These attunements are normally done over a course of a two-day workshop. I prefer to do the four attunements at the same time, as I believe it's beneficial to the student. The energy is stronger and the student is able to work and practice at their full capacity throughout the workshop. This process also allows the student to feel, sense and experience more of the Reiki energy. The four attunements are given on both days of the workshop to supercharge the student and raise their energy vibration to the peak level possible with first degree Reiki. We also offer a distant attunement service as part of the home study course. Preparing for the workshop. Before attending the first degree workshop, there are a few basic things you need to do in preparation. These guidelines will enable you to get the most from the workshop and the initiation ceremony. Avoid taking alcohol or any other form of drug for at least 48 hours before the workshop. These substances slow and hinder the flow of Reiki throughout the body. Avoid eating meat, fish, processed foods or any other junk food for at least 24 hours. If possible, have a day of fresh fruit, salad and vegetables. The digestion of food takes more energy than any other bodily function. Proteins and highly processed foods take more time to digest and will steal vital energy from your body. If possible, meditate each day for a week before attending the workshop. This will help to focus your thoughts, expectations and mind on becoming a Reiki channel for healing. The morning of the workshop. Get up earlier than normal so you have plenty of time to prepare for the day ahead. You will then have time to relax and not become rushed or stressed. If possible, take a walk or a gentle jog to energize your system. Avoid tea or coffee, however naturally caffeine-free herbal tea is fine. Eat only fruit for breakfast. You will have more energy for the workshop. Mentally prepare yourself with a short meditation. Give yourself plenty of time to reach your destination. The stress of being late can upset your day and your enjoyment. Come to the workshop with an open mind, body and spirit. You will get out only what you put into the workshop. What happens during the initiation? Many people wonder why the initiation ceremony must remain a secret and why the students need to close their eyes during the attunements. Questions like these are quite normal and understandable. The reason for the secrecy is to keep the ritual sacred and cherished by the Reiki master and their students. The eyes kept closed allow the recipient being attuned to go inside and focus on the experience. It also helps the Reiki master concentrate on what is a complex set of procedures. During the initiation, the Reiki master uses the ancient symbols and mantras, holy words that activate and direct certain energies, rediscovered by Dr. Yasui to connect the student to the universal life force. Dr. Hayashi described it to Madame Takata so beautifully when he said, The universal life force is so big we cannot measure it, so deep we cannot fathom it. Therefore, in Japanese, we call it Reiki. He continued, it is comparable to a radio station, broadcasting radio waves everywhere. There are no wires connecting the radio station with your home. Yet when you turn on the receiver and tune into the radio waves from the station, you receive what they are sending. Likewise, the principles of Reiki are the same. The energy is everywhere. It travels through space without wires. Once you've been connected to the energy, it flows automatically forever. It is a universal and immeasurable energy, and its power is unlimited. What happens after the initiation? When you receive your first attunement during the initiation ceremony, energy will start to flow through your hands at the thought of healing. You will also start a 21-day cleansing and detoxification cycle through the chakras. The Reiki attunement has a powerful healing influence on the mind, body and spirit, activating all seven chakras, beginning with the root and ending at the crown chakra. 
each one taking approximately 24 hours. This happens three times. You may not be aware of this depending on how fit and healthy you are. The more toxic you are, the more you will become aware of the cleansing process. Your body is preparing you for healing. When the toxins are out of your system, your body can work at the ultimate level for healing. Your whole system will be readjusted and rebalanced. You may experience symptoms of physical cleansing and detoxification such as runny nose, headaches or diarrhea. There is no need to be alarmed, the body is simply flushing out the toxins. It is a good idea to spend a little bit more time resting over the 21 day period. Use the time for self-healing and reflection. Place your hands on any ache or pains you may be experiencing and allow Reiki to ease your discomfort and speed up the healing process. The healing energy works on all levels of the mind, body and spirit. This process can be quite emotional and exhausting at times as the Reiki energy goes to work on the emotional and physical blocks, scars and baggage that your body has collected and stored throughout your lifetime. Reiki's wisdom will do whatever is needed to release you from the fears and barriers that prevent you leading a happy, fulfilling life. If you find yourself getting emotional and wanting to cry, scream or shout, let it happen. The old saying, better out than in, is so true and therapeutically beneficial to your being. Release the ties that bind you to your old habits and lifestyle. Reiki is like a rebirth. You can cleanse your mind, body and spirit and start again. Trust in the healing power of Reiki. Some reactions may seem unpleasant, but by accepting them as part of your personal healing process and not attaching a great deal of importance to them, they will soon pass. You may also find yourself dealing with certain issues in your dreams. It can be helpful to keep a record of them in a dream journal. Then when you have time, you can meditate on the issues. There are also two extremely good techniques for unraveling the meaning of dreams and how they relate to your life. The first is dream work, which is a form of gestalt therapy developed by Dr. Fritz Perls. It is simple and easy to understand. You are shown how to conduct conversations with your dreams. During these conversations, your unconscious mind will unlock and reveal the true meaning of your dreams to you. There are many good books on the subject, including The Red Book of Gestalt by Gail Houston. Professor Eugene Genlin developed another technique for working with your dreams called focusing. This subtle yet profound skill teaches you how to get in touch with the wisdom of the body. And Wiser Connell's excellent book, The Power of Focusing, is a practical guide to using Professor Genlin's techniques to unravel the meaning of your dreams. The attunement switch on an extra surge of power which fuels all life. The more you use Reiki, the stronger it becomes. Establish the habit of giving yourself Reiki before you fall asleep at night and when you wake up in the morning. Remember, once you've been attuned to the universal life force, you can begin channeling the healing energy of Reiki to yourself and others. Reiki is never sent. It is always drawn through the channel. This is one of the major differences between Reiki and magnetic or spiritual healing. Because the energy is being drawn through the channel by the recipient, as opposed to being directed by the healer, the Reiki practitioner will never feel drained or take on the condition of the patient. On the contrary, the practitioner is also receiving a self-treatment as the Reiki energy flows through them to the recipient. Your psychic, intuitive and creative abilities will be raised by between 50 to 80 percent. By raising your vibratory level, you will begin a transformational process on all the many levels and aspects of your life. We all live in an extremely stressful and hectic world which can influence our total being. Reiki helps control how our mind, body and spirit responds both internally and externally to often negative and destructive external stimuli from our world. If applied regularly, Reiki will reduce the extreme highs and lows of life, gradually leading to a new balanced existence. Ways to use Reiki after the attunement. Once you've been attuned to Reiki, the energy will flow through your hands whenever you touch with the intention of healing or helping. You can use Reiki on yourself, other adults, children, prenatal babies, accidents, emergencies, animals, birds, fish, plants, trees, seeds, crystals, food, drinks, your work, contracts, projects you're working on, letters, important documentation, your car for protection, while you're traveling, your home, your drinking water, your bath water, your shower water. In fact, the list is endless. You're only limited by your imagination. This concludes Lesson 6. Please move on now to Lesson 7. Reiki 1, Lesson 7. Anatomic Illustrations for Reiki. 
Reiki, with its infinite wisdom, goes to the place in the body that requires healing. That is why Reiki is so easy to learn and apply. There is no need to study the anatomy of the human body or animals to treat a person or animal successfully. You simply place your hands on the body and channel the energy. Reiki will do the rest. However, it can be helpful to know where the major organs, lymphatic and endocrine systems are in the body. This knowledge will allow you to treat specific problems or organs quickly and easily. The following illustrations are simple diagrams of the human anatomy. If you decide to further your studies, we recommend that you make full use of your public library. They will have books on the human anatomy as well as books on the anatomy of various pets and animals. Of course, the Internet and the World Wide Web offers a multitude of free information and any good search engine will open up a doorway to many excellent guides to the anatomy. The endocrine system. This system consists of the ductless glands that release hormones. It works together with the nervous system in regulating metabolic activities so that homeostasis is maintained. There are a few primary endocrine glands. The pituitary gland at the base of the brain, the thyroid gland in the neck, the four or five parathyroid glands in the tissues around the thyroid, the two adrenal glands above the kidney against the posterior wall of the abdomen, certain areas of the pancreas near the stomach, the sex glands or gonads, testes in the male and ovaries in the female, Various hormones are released in the endocrine glands with each secretion causing a different reaction in the body. These include the body's growth rate, control of sex and reproductive functions and the regulation of calcium and phosphate levels in the blood. Please review the images within this video or via our members areas for more information. The lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a system of thin tubes that runs throughout the body. These tubes are called lymph vessels. You may also hear them called lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic system is similar to blood circulation. The tubes branch through all parts of the body like the arteries and veins that carry blood, except that the lymphatic system carries a colorless liquid called lymph. Lymph is a milky body fluid that contains a type of white blood cell called lymphocytes, along with proteins and fats. Lymph seeps outside the blood vessels in spaces of body tissue and is stored in the lymphatic system to flow back into the bloodstream. Through the flow of blood in and out of arteries and into the veins and through the lymph nodes and into the lymph, the body is able to eliminate the products of cellular breakdown and bacterial invasion. Two very large areas are of significance in this system. The right lymphatic duct, which drains lymph fluid from the upper right quarter of the body above the diaphragm and down the midline, and the thoracic duct, a structure roughly 16 inches long located in the mediastinum of the pleural cavity, which drains the rest of the body. It is through the actions of this system, including the spleen, the thymus, lymph nodes and lymph ducts, that our body is able to fight infection and to ward off invasion from foreign invaders. Lymph plays an important role in the immune system and in absorbing fats from the intestines. The lymphatic vessels are present wherever there are blood vessels and transport excess fluid to the end vessel without the assistance of any pumping action. There are more than a hundred tiny oval structures called lymph nodes. These are mainly in the neck, groin and armpits, but are scattered all along the lymph vessels. They act as barriers to infection by filtering out and destroying toxins and germs. The largest body of lymphoid tissue in the human body is the spleen. Once again, please review the diagrams within this video and also within the Reiki store members area for more information. Alternatively, please search your local library and the internet for more information. But remember, Reiki will go where it's needed, so it's not important to be an expert on the human body. This concludes Lesson 7. Please move on now to Lesson 8. Reiki 1 Lesson 8. Reiki Self-Treatment. Once you've received the first degree attunement from a Reiki master, you are ready to work with the universal life force. However, it's important that you realize, as with every profession, that there's a need to first practice and master the skills associated with healing. Madame Takata taught her students to heal themselves first, then their families, then their friends. Only then did she believe they would be adequately qualified and able to work as a practitioner and heal other people. When a person first learns to drive a car, they need time, practice and experience to master what appears to be a rather complex set of procedures. However, within a very relatively short space of time, they can drive safely and effortlessly as they unconsciously control the car and all the various skills associated with driving. Likewise, with time, practice and experience, you will master the skills and techniques associated with the art of Reiki healing. Treat the early months as a learning experience, almost like an apprenticeship. 
This will give you the time you need to develop your confidence and skills. Remember, the more you work with Reiki, the more intuitive you will become. Your energy vibration will be raised and you will develop and experience a new joyful consistency in your life. Self-healing is the starting point for personal development and self-discovery. Reiki is not just a tool for healing. It also brings protection, prevention and personal transformation on all levels. As you progress along your new path, invariably, you will come up against obstacles and setbacks in your life that often seem like the whole ocean front. But with Reiki, you will have the strength to deal with them as though they are but pebbles on the beach. Even if you never use Reiki to heal anyone but yourself, you will find a new sense of balance and peace in your life. There is no other method of self-treatment as simple and as effective as Reiki. Because Reiki is always available to you whenever you feel tired, stressed, have any aches or pains, you can alleviate them by simply laying your hands on your body. The infinite wisdom of Reiki will go wherever it is needed. Recharge your batteries every day, not just when problems, difficulties, anxieties or illnesses arise. Daily self-treatment will help to prevent sickness and disease and bring your life into focus and balance quickly. Every time you use Reiki on yourself, you raise your self-esteem and self-love. You will discover your mission in life and become more compassionate and loving. Instead of getting stressed at the normal things you come into contact with each day, such as traffic jams, meetings, interviews, going to the doctors or dentists, waiting in queues, your children's needs and your family responsibilities, to name but a few, allow Reiki into your life and let Reiki become a new way of life to you. Set aside a little time each day for self-treatment. First thing in the morning will give you a positive boost for the day ahead. Alternatively, a self-treatment lasting at night will relax and unwind you, leading to a good night's sleep. Good places for self-treatment are in the bath, the shower or lying in bed. The possibilities are endless and the benefits are immeasurable. Reiki is a gift to be savoured and enjoyed. Remember the more you use Reiki, the stronger and more profound it becomes. Daily use could extend your own life by a number of years. How Reiki can help you. There are a number of benefits to be gained which occur without any effort from a daily Reiki self-treatment, including Reiki will relax you when you're stressed. Reiki brings about deep relaxation. Reiki centers your thoughts when you are confused. Reiki energizes you when you feel drained. Reiki calms you when you're frightened. Reiki focuses your mind and helps you to solve problems. Reiki relieves pain. Reiki accelerates natural healing of wounds. Reiki improves health. Reiki gradually clears up chronic problems. Reiki helps prevent the development of disease. Reiki detoxifies the body. Reiki dissolves energy blockages. Reiki releases emotional wounds. Reiki increases the vibrational frequency of the body. And Reiki helps change negative conditioning and behavior. How to treat yourself with Reiki. There is no right or wrong way to work with Reiki on oneself. As you become more experienced with the Reiki energy, you will intuitively move your hands to wherever it feels right. However, if you are aware of a specific problem, such as an injury or pain, then you should place your hands directly over that area to begin with and follow up with a full self-treatment. In the beginning, it is always best to follow a set of procedures as shown in the following illustrations, marked self-treatment hand positions. When you've mastered the hand positions, you can then leave each self-treatment up to your own intuition. You may wish to work with music to add the right relaxing mood. Find a place where you won't be disturbed if possible. Normally, you would spend three to five minutes on each hand position. However, time is often short, but remember, a little Reiki is better than no Reiki. On completion of this self-treatment, drink a large glass of purified water, close your eyes, and go inside and pay attention to the thoughts and emotions that you've arisen during the session. You may feel lightheaded, and if you need to rest or sit down for a short time, allow yourself this time. If you feel you need to continue to work on a specific area of the body, even if you've completed a full self-treatment, then go with your intuition. Always listen to your mind and body. Remember, the following hand positions are only a guide. Use your intuition. Self-treatment hand positions. Position 1. Cup your hands and gently rest them over your eyes, cheekbones and forehead which is where your third eye chakra is. This position will help with stress, eye problems, asthma, head colds, allergies, sinuses, pituitary gland, the penile gland, and the cerebral nerves. Position two, place your hands on top of your head, fingertips touching, covering the crown chakra. 
This position will help with migraine, headaches, eye problems, multiple sclerosis, stress, bladder, digestive disorders, flatulence, and emotional problems. Position three, hands on either side of your head with fingers covering your temples. This position will help with your balance, tinnitus, hearing and ear problems, colds, flu, and will help balance the functions of the right and left brain. Position number four, place your hands on the back of your head covering the occipital ridge. This position will help with headaches, eye problems, stress, hay fever, sinuses, digestive disorders, fears, phobias, shock, depression, and stroke. Position number five, hands covering the top of the shoulders and the bottom of the neck. This position will help with aches and pains, stress, neck, tight muscles, nerves, spinal injuries, and shock. Position number six, place your hands around the neck with the heels covering the throat chakra. This position will help with self-expression, communication, breathing, voice and speech problems, bronchitis, flus, colds, and anger. Position number seven. Your hands form a T, left hand covering the heart chakra, and the right hand over the thymus gland. This position will help with the heart, angina, lungs, thymus, thyroid, weight problems, immune system, lymph, emotional problems, and stress. Position number 8, 9, 10, and 11. Hands are positioned horizontally at the top of the torso, with fingertips touching. Move hands down as shown until finally ending in a V inside the hip bone. Positions 8, 9, 10 and 11 will help with all major organs and glands, disease, infections, stomach, intestines, reproductive system, anger and emotions. Position 12 and 13. Place hands over the front of the knees. Position 12. This position will help with leg pains, varicose veins and circulation. Place hands behind the back of the knees. Position 13 to also help with leg pains, varicose veins, and circulation. Positions number 14, 15, 16, and 17. Hands are positioned first at the shoulders, top of the neck, and then gradually move down horizontally across the back with fingertips touching. Remember these are guidelines, and if you find this quite difficult, if maybe you're not as flexible as you used to be, just place your fingertips as close together as possible. Move hands down as shown until finally ending in a V at the base of the spine. Position 14, 15, 16 and 17 will help with all major organs and glands, disease, infection, back and spinal problems and stress. Position 18. If possible, sit in the lotus position and hold both feet with your hands. Alternatively, if this position is too uncomfortable, you can sit cross-legged with your right leg resting on your left leg and place your hands on the top and underside of your right foot. And then alternate and place hands on the top and underside of the left foot. This position will help with leg pains, varicose veins, and all major organs and glands in line with the reflexology points. This concludes Lesson 8. Please move forward now to Lesson 9. Reiki 1, Lesson 9. Preparing to treat others with Reiki. Appropriate environment. It is important to create the right setting whenever possible for a Reiki healing session. You may work from home and be able to use a spare room just for healing. If this is not practical, you may want to look at the viability of joining your local therapy or healing centre. In most cases, you'll be able to rent a healing or therapy room at a reasonable rate, often on an hourly, daily or weekly basis. The room should be light and clean and feel safe. Bright pastel colours such as white, yellow or purple can be used to create the desired effect. Make sure you will not be interrupted by internal or external distractions, so unplug the telephone and disconnect the doorbell. If you're working from home, let your family or friends know your schedule so they do not disturb you. If possible, always use a therapy table. Alternatively, you could use a strong table with thick blankets on top. You will need two pillows, one for the client's head and one for their feet. Make sure the room is heated to a comfortable level. Some people may get cold just lying still on the treatment table, so always have a warm blanket available. Add a plant to the room and some crystals under the table to help with the right energy. Some people like to work in total silence during a session. Personally, we prefer to always work with therapeutic music, such as classical, ambient or new age to help our clients relax. Music also can help the therapist relax and allow them to focus on healing. Natural sounds like whales, dolphins and running water are very therapeutic and relaxing. 
As part of our Reiki Master Home Study course, we also provide you with our own specially composed music for healing and meditation called Heartbeat, which is extremely relaxing and therapeutic, and a beautiful guided meditation based on the ancient light meditation. We recommend that you play this music while you treat other people and yourself with Reiki. There are also a wide range of compact discs and tapes available, and MP3s that have been created specifically for Reiki. They have been designed to run for the length of a full treatment with a bell or chime, added at three or five minute intervals, to let the therapist know when to move their hands to another position. Burning incense or oils can add a pleasing aroma to your room. However, be careful as some people are sensitive to certain smells and it may cause them to experience an unpleasant therapy session. To prevent this happening, ask your client before you light your oils or incense sticks. During a Reiki session, you may find your client begins to cry as they release blocked emotional issues. So always keep a box of tissues handy for these occasions. For a finishing touch to your room, you may want to place photographs of Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi, Madame Takata, Buddha or Jesus, depending on who you call upon during your invocation, your Reiki prayer. Remove all jewellery. Reiki can travel through all materials such as stone, brick, concrete and metal. However, the metal and stones used in the manufacture of jewellery come into contact with and attract certain types of negative energy. To enable you to work with Reiki free from all subtle energy disturbances, it's advisable to remove all jewellery such as rings, watches, earrings, chains and necklaces. Therapists who work with precious stones and crystals for healing recognise that these materials can become saturated with negative energy. That is why they cleanse them on a regular basis. Remove tight clothing. To allow Reiki to flow freely through you and your client, it is important that you both remove tight clothing such as belts, ties and shoes. This will also make you feel more comfortable and relaxed. Reiki can travel through clothes so there's no need to remove any other forms of clothing. You may find it's more comfortable if you wear loose fitting clothes when you're working with Reiki such as a tracksuit. Avoid alcohol. Alcohol dissipates energy. Always refrain from consuming alcohol if you know you're going to be working with Reiki at least 24 hours before a session. Personal hygiene. Ensure you smell and appear clean and fresh. Avoid wearing strong perfumes or aftershaves. If you smoke, make sure you brush your teeth or use a mouth freshener. Refrain from eating garlic, onions or other foods that may leave a smell on your breath. Wash your hands before a Reiki session using a lightly scented or neutral soap. Your hands come into contact with your client's face and skin, so it's important for hygiene purposes and the peace of mind of your client that you have clean hands. The Invocation. Reiki Prayer. It is important to remember that as a Reiki practitioner, you're not healing your client. The people receiving Reiki are in fact healing themselves. You are merely the channel that enables them to draw the Reiki energy through your hands to the place it is needed. The invocation is a token that symbolizes you are giving up any claims to power. You are simply the conduit in which the infinite power of the universal life force flows. Although the invocation is not necessary to turn on the Reiki energy, I feel it enables the therapist to disassociate themselves from their ego and pay respect to the universal life force and the person they're about to work with. Your prayer should be personal and in line with your own beliefs. Ask for permission to be used as a channel for Reiki healing. We have listed below our own personal invocation which may help you develop a prayer that is suitable for your own use. Once your client is lying down on the healing table, relaxed and ready to receive Reiki, move to the top of the table, the client's head, Close your eyes, join your hands together in a prayer-like position in front of your heart chakra. Alternatively, if your client is seated, stand behind them and place your hands on their shoulders for the invocation. Our own personal invocation. We always like to take a few moments before we begin a treatment to mentally prepare ourselves for working as a channel for Reiki. This quiet time is perfect for getting in touch with our guides, mentors and assistants. It allows us a brief moment of reflection and focuses our thoughts on healing. It is important to begin the treatment with the right mental attitude. Your wish should be to pass on unconditional love and healing in the purest form and sense. I call upon Reiki, the universal life force, all the angelic beings who have worked with Reiki in the past, especially Dr. Yasui, Dr. Hayashi, Madame Takata, my guides and all the Reiki masters, past, present and future, to draw near and take part in this healing session. I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki permits me to become a channel for Reiki's unconditional love and healing on behalf of, insert your client's name. May Reiki's infinite wisdom go exactly where it's needed most, should it be for their higher good. May we all be empowered by your divine love and blessing. Amen. Cleanse and harmonize your client's aura. Prior to commencing the Reiki treatment, run your hands in your client's aura about six inches above their body from the head right down to their feet 
in a slow, smooth motion at least three times to remove any superficial energy buildup. This will also bring harmony to your client's aura and form a positive rapport between you and your client. Pay attention to your hands and use your intuition, sense for possible blockages or hotspots to focus on during your healing session. You are now ready to begin the treatment. This concludes Lesson 9. Please move on now to Lesson 10. Reiki 1 Lesson 10 Treating Others with Reiki Before you begin a full body treatment on another person, there are a few important things to remember. Never give a Reiki treatment to a person who has a pacemaker, as Reiki can alter its rhythm. Never give a Reiki treatment to a person who suffers from diabetes, mellitus, and are taking insulin injections unless they're prepared to check their own insulin levels every day as Reiki reduces the amount of insulin they require. Always explain to a person who is visiting you for the first time for a Reiki treatment exactly what you're going to do and the type of reactions that might occur. Stress that any one of these reactions are normal. They may experience one or two of these reactions, all of them or none of them. It makes no difference. Reiki will go wherever it is needed. The type of reactions that may occur are a sensation of heat, a sensation of cold, they may see colors, they may have past life flashes, they may have involuntary movements, they may even fall asleep, they may experience itchiness, emotional responses, rumbling stomach, memory flashes, pins and needles, and they may even sense your hands moving. Often the client will experience extreme cold at the position of your hands while you feel intense heat. If the client experiences nothing, explain to them that the Reiki energy often works on a subtle level. It has profound results which normally become apparent in the following days or weeks. Never forget the client is drawing Reiki through you. They are doing the healing on a subconscious level. You are only the channel. Reiki will always travel to the place it is needed most. No knowledge of the human anatomy or physiology is required to work with Reiki. Leave your ego aside and Reiki will do the work. Forget the symptoms, treat the whole person. Listen to your client's body through your hands. Sense the different types of energy. If the energy is strong, keep your hands in that position until you sense a shift in the energy level. Remember, use your intuition. Look for non-verbal communication from your client's body. Deep sighs or hand and leg movements often indicate something positive is taking place. The normal time required for a full body treatment is between 60 to 90 minutes. At the end of a treatment, always offer your client a glass of water to aid grounding. Always wash your hands under cold running water after each treatment. Beginning the treatment. Ensure your client is lying flat on the therapy table with their arms down by their sides. Their legs should also be flat against the table and must not be crossed as this may block the flow of Reiki. Gently lay your hands on your client's body. Keep them in each position for between 3 to 5 minutes. As you become more experienced, use your intuition. Your hands should be cupped with your fingers firmly closed as though you are trying to hold water. This keeps the channel strong between your client and the universal life force. If your fingers are open, Reiki can escape just as water would slip through your open fingers. In the case of burnt skin or a client's genitals and breast area, hold your hands just above the body. Don't forget the box of tissues. Full body treatment hand positions. Remember the following hand positions are only a guide. Use your intuition. Position 1. Cup your hands and gently rest them over your client's eyes, cheekbones and forehead, covering the third eye chakra. This position will help with stress, eye problems, asthma, head colds, allergies, sinuses, pituitary gland, penile gland and cerebral nerves. Position number two. Place your hands on top of your client's head with palms covering the crown chakra. This position will help with migraine, headaches, eye problems, multiple sclerosis, stress, bladder, digestive disorders, flatulence and emotional problems. Position number three. Hands on either side of your client's head with palms covering their temples. This position will help with balance, tinnitus, hearing and ear problems, colds, flu, balances the functions of the right and left brain. To move from position three to position four, Gently move your client's head to one side and place one hand behind the back of the head. Then using the other hand, push the head to the other side and move the second hand behind the back of the head, as shown in the illustrations. Position 4. Move your hands to the back of your client's head covering the occipital ridge. This position is good for headaches, eye problems, stress, hay fever, sinuses, digestive disorders, fear, phobia, shock, depression and stroke. 
To move from position four to position five, repeat the earlier process of moving the head to one side, then remove one hand, then gently move the head to the other side and remove the second hand. Position five. Place your hands along your client's jaw bones, covering the throat chakra. This position will help with self-expression, communication, breathing, voice and speech problems, bronchitis, flu, colds and anger. Position number six. Place your hands on your client's shoulders. This position will help with aches and pains in the arms, elbows and hands, tight shoulder muscles, stress, cold hands, disrupted blood supply to the arms and hands. Positions 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Begin by forming a T covering the heart chakra and the collarbone. Then move your hands down and across the torso covering the solar plexus and sacral chakras. Form a V to cover the root chakra. Finally place your hands over your client's knees and feet. These positions will help with all major organs and glands, disease, infections, stomach, intestines, reproductive system, anger, stress, emotions, leg pains and varicose veins. Once you've completed the front hand positions, ask your client to turn over. You may find that on occasions your clients have fallen asleep and you will need to gently wake them up. Positions 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. Begin by placing your hands across your client's shoulder blades. Move your hands down as shown until you reach the base of the spine. Form a T as shown covering the root chakra. Finally, place your hands across the back of your client's knees and undersides of their feet. These positions will also help with all major organs and glands, disease, infections, stomach, intestines, back and spinal problems, reproductive system, anger, stress, emotions, leg pains and varicose veins. Treat all major organs and glands through the reflexology points on the feet. Finally, when all the positions have been treated, place your left hand on your client's crown chakra and your right hand on the base of their spine. This final position balances the energy in the client's body. Complete your treatment by combing your client's aura. Stroke the body firmly from the crown down to the feet in a sweeping motion. Continue past the feet until you touch the floor for grounding. Repeat for a second time lightly touching the body and then finally comb the aura a few inches above the body. This concludes lesson 10. Please move on now to lesson 11. Reiki 1 lesson 11. A rapid Reiki treatment. On many occasions you will find it's not practical to spend 60 to 90 minutes conducting a complete Reiki treatment. Often for numerous reasons the person needing Reiki has a limited amount of time or you simply are called into action in a place far away from your normal healing room. There is an alternative quick and versatile technique that can be used in these situations. The rapid Reiki treatment focuses on all major chakra points while the client sits upright in a chair and takes between 15 to 30 minutes to complete. The rapid Reiki treatment. Position 1. First position, your client should be seated. Stand behind your client, place your hands on your client's shoulders and silently make your own personal invocation. Position 2. Remain behind your client, place both hands on top of your client's head covering their crown chakra. Position 3. Move to the side of your client, place one hand on their forehead at the third eye chakra and the other hand over their occipital ridge at the back of their head. Position 4. Remain at the side of your client, place one hand over their throat chakra at the center of your client's neck and the other hand parallel on the back of their neck. Position 5. Remain at the side of your client, place one hand on their heart chakra at the center of their chest and the other hand parallel between your client's shoulder blades. Position 6. Remain at the side of your client, place one hand on the solar plexus and the other hand parallel on the client's spine. Position 7. Remain at the side of your client, place one hand at the base of your client's stomach covering the sacral chakra and the other hand parallel on the base of your client's spine. Position 8. Move round to the front of your client and place one hand on each knee. Position 9. Kneel down in front of your client and place one hand over each of the client's feet with thumbs open, cupping feet to floor. Finally, comb your client's aura three times as you normally would after a full treatment. Wash your hands in cold running water and offer a cold drink of water to your client to assist grounding. Please note, for your comfort, positions 3 to 8 should be conducted while sitting in a chair. 
spend three to five minutes on each position unless your intuition tells you otherwise. A little Reiki is better than no Reiki at all. This concludes Lesson 11. Please move on now to Lesson 12. Reiki 1 Lesson 12 The Ultranium Rhythm and Reiki What is the Ultranium Rhythm? Biological research has discovered that the human body functions in various cycles. One of these cycles is called the Ultranium Rhythm, the natural body cycle of activity and rest. During sleep we dream every 90 to 100 minutes, even if we don't always remember doing so. In our daily lives this rhythm continues. During the day we often have a sudden urge to stop and rest. The body needs to take short breaks every 90 to 120 minutes to repair and maintain itself. Most people misjudge this natural and important process and fail to allow themselves a short power break. Instead of relaxing and recharging their batteries, most people opt for a quick boost of energy and power. This normally comes in the form of a coffee or tea break, sweets, chocolates, fizzy drinks or cigarettes. Unfortunately, all these are stimulants and simply gloss over the underlying need of the body to take regular breaks if it is to maintain health and well-being. When we consistently ignore these essential psychophysiological breaks, we are upsetting the fine balance and rhythms of the mind, body and spirit. This neglect leads to health problems and stress-related disorders such as depression, mood disorders, psychosomatic pain and illnesses, sexual dysfunction, eating disorders and a wide variety of psychological problems. Reiki can be used to prevent and help treat this problem by bringing the body back into equilibrium and normalizing the ultranium rhythm. The Ultranium Rhythm Technique During the day, look out for signs from your own body-mind telling you to stop for a moment and rest. These signs normally manifest as a sudden feeling of slowing down or loss of energy. You may feel yourself drift off into a semi-trance-like state, somewhat like daydreaming. At this point, allow yourself a short break and you will revitalize and rejuvenate the whole body, mind and spirit. Place your cupped hands over your eyes, as shown in the illustration. Close your eyes and go inside. Become aware of any part of the body that feels tight, sore or tired. If you discover a part of your body that needs Reiki, move your hands to that place and keep them there for as long as you need to. Try to imagine or sense that part of your body being filled with a healing white light Reiki. Then make the light grow brighter and brighter, larger and larger, until it envelops your whole body. Sense the feeling of peace and well-being as the healing light fills your aura and forms a protective shield of pure, unconditional love and energy around you. When you feel rejuvenated and recharged, gently open your eyes and continue with your day. Repeat this exercise on a regular basis to keep your energy levels high and prevent stress and ill health. It is important to change how you respond to this natural rhythm. Replace the junk food and quick attempts to boost your energy levels with this healthier and natural self-healing technique that will add years to your life. If you fail to find a part of the body that needs Reiki, go back inside once more and look again. Often, we have found it takes a second look to find a part of the body that requires healing. This is because it is invariably hidden deep in the unconscious mind. However, if you fail to uncover anything, simply keep your hands over your eyes for as long as you require. This short break will still be beneficial to your health and well-being. When time or conditions prevent you taking these short power breaks, there is another way of maintaining your fight against sickness and disease. The thymus gland, which is situated between the throat and heart chakra, see illustration, is a twin-lobed organ that is responsible for producing white infection-fighting blood cells. Although the function of the thymus are not fully understood, it is known to play another important part of developing immunities against various diseases by forming a hormone essential to the immune system known as THF, thymic humoral factor. Researchers believe that it is this hormone that acts on lymphocytes, causing them to change into plasma cells, which subsequently form antibodies that produce immunities. Tap gently 20 to 30 times on your chest over the position of your thymus. See illustration. Or place one of your hands over this position for several minutes. This simple technique will help maintain and boost your immune system while filling your body with vitality. This concludes Lesson 12. Please move on now to Lesson 13. Reiki 1, Lesson 13. A Group Reiki Treatment. Group treatments were first used by Dr. Hayashi at his clinic in Tokyo. He would often treat clients with the help of several other Reiki practitioners. Many people find it more enjoyable to work with another person or persons. 
There are also several advantages of working in a group. The benefits of a group treatment. Group treatment is quicker, taking as little as six to 10 minutes to complete a full Reiki treatment. Group treatment is very powerful. The client receives an intense burst of healing energy. This often has the effect of kick-starting the client's natural healing process. Group treatment allows the team to form a bond and create a unique energy. As we all experience Reiki in different ways, clients will often notice the different energy vibrations from different Reiki practitioners. To perform a group treatment, you simply first of all conduct a group treatment of the front of the client or recipient, then ask the person to turn over and conduct a full treatment on the back of the client, as illustrated. Guidelines for conducting a group treatment. All the normal preparations and procedures of a full Reiki treatment still apply to a group session. Before you begin a group treatment, decide who will work on the head positions and ultimately close the healing session. Depending on how many Reiki practitioners are involved in the group treatment, decide who will work on the various hand positions. Don't forget to decide who will complete the session by smoothing the client's aura. If four or more practitioners are taking part in the healing session, you can have one practitioner at each end of the client's body, while the other practitioners work in the middle. Remember to have a box of tissues available. This is a wonderful way to treat many people in a short space of time, and ideal for therapy days. However, remember to wash your hands before and after each treatment under cold running water to dissipate any negative energy and assist grounding for each member of the team. Spend time sharing the experiences. Group treatment is a great way to learn and grow together. This concludes Lesson 13. Please move on now to Lesson 14. Reiki 1 Lesson 14. Reiki and Pregnancy, Babies and Children. Pregnancy. Reiki is both safe and extremely beneficial to an unborn child and their pregnant mother. We have found that women who have studied the first degree and are attuned to the universal life force find the experience of pregnancy and childbirth more enjoyable and easier to cope with. Reiki can help during pregnancy in various ways such as Reiki alleviates morning sickness. Reiki reduces stress and tiredness. Reiki stimulates the baby's healthy development. Reiki can be used to treat painful muscles, joints, or the spine. Reiki strengthens the bond between a mother and her baby. When a mother who is attuned to Reiki places her hands on her tummy, she is passing pure unconditional love and healing to her unborn child. Reiki keeps the mind, body, and spirit in balance, reducing the chances of postnatal depression. Reiki nourishes the fetus with love and the universal life force. It gently comforts, protects and envelops the unborn baby. If the father of an unborn baby is a Reiki practitioner, he can also help during the pregnancy by treating his partner. The important bond between father and child will also be stimulated each time he places his hands on his partner's pregnant tummy. The father can communicate through his hands with his child. Reiki can help couples who are finding it difficult to conceive a child by reducing stress and stimulating both the female's natural reproductive cycle and the male's production of sperm. In many cases, when a couple are desperate for a child, they place extreme stress on themselves, causing an imbalance of their mind, body and spirits. So often, the moment they give up and forget about trying to have children and the pressure and stress factor is removed, many couples find their prayers are answered and the pregnancy is discovered. Babies. Reiki can accelerate the recovery time of the mother and baby after the birth. It is especially good for caesarean sections and healing the various scars and stitches often associated with childbirth. Reiki can be used to heal the baby's umbilical cord. Reiki can be used to vitalize and nourish the mother's milk if the baby is breastfed. Alternatively, if the baby is to be bottle fed, the formula can be treated with Reiki. Treating and enriching the baby's food can help nourish and satisfy the baby's hunger. This will help them suckle until they are content and full. Regular filling feeds leads to less sleepless nights, something all parents pray for. Reiki stimulates balance in the newborn baby. It can easily be channeled to the baby whenever the mother or father, depending on who is attuned to the energy, touches their child. Reiki can be used to help treat cradle cap, colic and wind. Important note, always consult your doctor, no matter how trivial it may seem if you are concerned about your baby. Children. Reiki can be used to treat your children throughout their lives, from the early days and months through puberty, adolescence and into adulthood. Reiki is wonderful for all their aches and pains. 
Instinctively, we touch or kiss our children better when they fall or injure themselves. With Reiki, we speed up the healing process and boost their own natural healing abilities. Reiki is a special gift you can share with your children. We recommend you teach your own children the five principles of Reiki and have them incorporate them into their lives. Children love Reiki. If possible, you should introduce and attune your children to Reiki. It will help them focus and find their own path in life. Use Reiki at bedtime to help your children drift off to sleep. Reiki balances your child's mind, body and spirit, leading to a clearer, more focused approach to life at school and at home. When a child has an accident, they often cry because of the shock. Treat your child by placing one of your hands on their solar plexus and the other hand at the base of the spine. This concludes Lesson 14. Please move on now to Lesson 15. Reiki 1, Lesson 15. Reiki brings comfort to those crossing over. There is only one certainty in life, and that is that death comes to us all. Facing our own mortality is often difficult. We have two main choices in coming to terms with our own death or the death of a family member or friend. We can choose to view death as final and become consumed in grief, or we can envisage life after death and celebrate the transition to eternal life. Our beliefs and personal experiences shape how we deal with this extremely emotive issue. Losing my sister Kim at the young age of 33 was a devastating blow to myself and my family. It was the first time I'd experienced losing someone close. Looking back, in hindsight, and through my own research and subsequent experiences with people who came to me for help before dying, I found many common attitudes and mistakes associated with death. The Western world in general treats the subject of dying as taboo, something we shouldn't talk about. As a stark contrast, Eastern philosophy and the teachings and beliefs of many ancient cultures view death as a natural part of life. They believe that our souls are eternal. The body is only a temporary vessel that allows the soul access to earth. Karmically, we are here to learn and grow. When a person becomes more spiritually aware, they grow to understand and accept these ancient beliefs. When you look at the two choices, it should be easy to believe in life after death, rather than believe that death is final and we have nothing else to look forward to. All religions are built on the premise that to obtain eternal life, you must be good in this one. Thanatology, the study of death and dying, has given humanity the insight into life after death. People who have had near-death experiences bring hope and reports of a better place. Books such as Saved by the Light by Danian Brinkley offer inspiration and comfort to us all. In 1975, Danian was struck by lightning as he made a telephone call to a business partner during a thunderstorm. He was pronounced dead in the ambulance on the way to hospital. For a little over 20 minutes, he experienced what people fear the most, what really happens to you when you die. Danian Brinkley tells how his ethereal soul leaves his earthly body and floats high above looking down at the scene of his death. He felt no pain or sadness at leaving his body or his life behind. A tunnel of bright light appears in front of him and he is quickly engulfed by it. As he progresses into the light, he feels an overwhelming sense of peace and love. He goes on to tell of meeting spiritual beings and being shown a beautiful spiritual realm. This life-changing experience is not unique to Danian Brinkley. Thousands of other people who have died on the operating table or after an accident only to come back from the brink have reported similar experiences. If Danian had been the only person to profess to such a profound experience, then we could dismiss it as fiction or fantasy. A man with a wild imagination who suffered hallucinations perhaps after a serious and almost fatal accident. There are nine common traits that thanatologists like Dr. Raymond Moody, author of Life After Life, have been able to define through countless studies with people who have had near-death experiences. This research, we believe, proves that there is life after death. The nine common traits are as follows. A person senses they are dead. A feeling of peace without pain no matter how they died. An out-of-body experience, their soul or essence floats above the dead body below. A tunnel appears and the person is drawn into another world. Beings of light appear, often deceased relatives and friends. A particular being of light appears to greet and guide them. A being of light takes them through a life review with highlights of all the pleasant and unpleasant aspects of their life. The person is told they must return. They feel reluctant to do so but understand they have no choice. On returning, the person has a personality transformation. 
They no longer fear death, and they're often guided and inspired towards a new, definite purpose in their life. The knowledge that there is life after death should be incorporated into your own life, as well as the life of your family, friends, and people who you meet along your path to eternal life. We urge you to study and become more aware of how to use this knowledge to help people who fear death. Make their transition a happy and joyous experience. Treat also their families so they may celebrate in the knowledge that their loved ones are not suffering and lost forever. They have simply migrated to a beautiful spiritual world that is filled with pure unconditional love. One day they will once again meet and be with them. Working with people who are dying. Reiki connects us to the universal life force, the energy and unconditional love that people who have had near-death experiences talk about. When you use Reiki in a situation such as with a person who is terminally ill, you are connecting them to the unconditional love of God and preparing them for the transition. You will often find Reiki temporarily revitalizes them so they have energy to deal with any unfinished business they may have. It is important to help them, if possible, tidy up their affairs. Teach them to heal and mend any family relationships that may have been strained in the past. Encourage them to forgive and let go of any unnecessary anger and pain. Death is not failure, it is a natural part of life. Encourage family members and friends to say goodbye and let the person who is dying know it's okay to go. And although it hurts, they can carry on and survive without them. This often brings relief and removes the feeling of guilt from the person who is dying. Reiki can alleviate pain and anxiety and bring final peace and harmony to the mind, body and spirit. Reiki gives the person control of how and when they die. Reiki builds a bridge to the other side and brings the life of a person to a joyful conclusion. Treat the family and friends if possible with Reiki after their loved one has passed on. We have found while the soul has departed and gone on to a joyous beginning, the people left behind often find it extremely difficult to come to terms with losing a close family member or friend. Heal their pain and fill their mind, body and spirit and lives with the unconditional and omnipotent love of Reiki. This concludes Lesson 15. Please move on now to Lesson 16. Reiki 1 Lesson 16 Use your imagination with Reiki Reiki is present in all living things. Your imagination is the only thing that can set limitations on its uses. We have listed some of the most common in this lesson. Reiki and animals. All animals adore Reiki. Large or small, fierce or friendly, animals are extremely sensitive to the healing energy of Reiki. Start practicing with your own pets and as you become more confident, you can move on to other people's pets and animals. As with treating humans, Reiki will go where it's needed most. The only difference with animals is that they often guide you to the exact place that requires treatment by moving around until your hand lands on the exact spot. Animals will also let you know when they've had enough by moving away. There is a huge market for treating animals with Reiki. Use your imagination to develop your own techniques for treatment and develop a marketing strategy. Talk to your local vet or animal welfare centre. Advertise, you'll be surprised at the number of people with pets who need and want your help. Basic techniques for animals. The very small animals, such as birds or mice, can be cupped in your hands. Larger animals, such as cats, dogs, horses and cows, normally prefer that you begin by placing your hands behind their ears and working around their body, as you would with a normal full treatment for humans. However, if the animal has a specific injury, place your hands directly over the injury. Fish can be treated by placing your hands on either side of the fish tank. Animals that are wild or dangerous can be treated safely through distant healing, which you learn in the second degree. Another safe way to treat animals is by treating their food and drink. However, this is a weaker form of treatment. Remember, use your imagination. Plants and vegetation. Reiki will enrich your plants, flowers, trees and gardens. Daily treatment will soon show positive results. The easiest way to prove how effective Reiki is with your plants and vegetation is to conduct a simple experiment. Take several seeds, charge half of them with Reiki and place them in a pot. Then plant the other untreated seeds in a separate identical pot. Treat the seeds which were charged in the beginning with Reiki each day and observe how they flourish. Compare them to the pot of seeds that were simply left to grow naturally. Basic techniques for plants and vegetation. Treat seeds or bulbs before sowing or planting by cupping them in your hands for several minutes. Indoor and outdoor potted plants can be treated daily by placing your hands around the pot. Flowers, bushes and plants can be treated by placing your hands gently on their leaves, buds, branches or stems. 
hold cut flowers by their stems for a couple of minutes. Continue daily treatment by placing your hands around the vase and you will extend the flower's life. Trees need longer treatments. The easiest way is to hug a tree. Lawns, plants, shrubs, flowers and trees can also be treated by treating their water supply. Larger gardens, woods and forests can be treated through distant healing, which again you will learn in the second degree. Food and drink. Treat your food and drink before you consume it. This will enrich it with the universal life force and improve the digestion process. The consumption of food takes more energy than any other bodily function. The quicker and more easily it is digested, the more energy is available for other activities. Basic techniques for food and drink. If you grow your own vegetables and herbs, treat as shown previously for plant and vegetation. During food preparation, you can place the food in your hands and conduct a short Reiki treatment. This is especially good if you're preparing a meal for the family. Just before you eat or drink, place your hands just above the plate or glass. This is especially useful if you're eating out and you're unable to see the food being prepared. Alternatively, you can place your hands on your stomach to assist digestion. Further uses for Reiki. There are a million and one other uses for Reiki, including flat car batteries, especially on cold winter mornings, the medicine cabinet or first aid box, the bath water, your home, your car, protecting while travelling on trains, planes, buses, etc. We always like to send Reiki to the person either driving the train or flying the plane. Your work, your letters and documentation. In fact, you're only limited by your imagination. Use your imagination right now by listing as many ideas as you can on different ways to use Reiki in your life. Then make sure and try them out. Each idea will breed another one. Have fun and good luck. This concludes Lesson 16. Please move on now to Lesson 17. Reiki 1 Lesson 17 Final Thoughts About Reiki 1 The first degree is the beginning of a wonderful journey filled with learning and growth on so many different levels. Many people find that the first degree is all they need to study and incorporate to lead to a more fulfilling life, while others will continue their studies and progress on to the second degree and then even master and teacher degree. The first degree connects the student to the universal life force and gives them the tools to heal themselves, their family and others. Many people just like ourselves have been drawn to Reiki and find that it changes their life for the better. Reiki brings a sense of purpose, knowledge, direction, calm and equilibrium into a chaotic world. We have been able to incorporate the principles and teachings of Reiki into our personal lives and into our clinical practice, entwining its energy and philosophy seamlessly into other disciplines, practices and treatments we work with. Reiki combines extremely well with all other therapies, including reflexology, aromatherapy, massage, the metamorphic technique, hypnosis, hypnotherapy, gestalt therapy, NLP, dream work, regression therapy, focusing and crystal healing to name but a few. It also combines safely with orthodox medical care, particularly post-operative health care, helping to accelerate the natural healing process. Reiki is a special gift to be cherished and used. We urge you to incorporate Reiki into your lives and use this gift daily or as often as possible. Get busy and heal yourself, your family, your friends and others. Life is an adventure. Live it. Enjoy it. This completes Reiki 1, the practitioner level degree.